Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. It's time to join the conversation. Let's kick it. Dance. Welcome to another episode of Hard Headed. I am your host, Matt Amos. With me as always. What is happening? Chet Sears. Troy. He's an idiot. Trussell. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> hey, you can't say that on oh, the man. air. You can't say that on the air. Yeah, you, you can. All right. I anyway, uh, today we've got uh, what's on Chet's mind, our top three time wasters, and Troy is going to take us out with a good word. Uh, so kicking it off, Chet, what's on your mind, even though I have a feeling I know? I've oh. got two things. Oh, um, maybe not. i got two things. Well, one of them, I've been running this experiment on YouTube uh, for weeks Oh, and great. I have the results. Okay. I've been saying uh, res- responding in our we have a we have a thread on Signal for the hard-headed group. And are you going to go look up for evidence right now? Is that what you're doing? Cuz no. I've been no. I I have experimented with you know texting and commenting and all that. There it, it could just seem harsh. Right? It, you know, so um, hey, do you want to go do such and such? No, I don't. Like, well, may, I may have said, ah, no, I don't. But I typed in, no, I don't. And you may have read it. I heard it. No, I don't. I heard it. No. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> so uh, I've been intentionally writing sentences, responses back to you guys over the last two months of the things that sh- you're more than likely would be interpreted that way. But then I put that little smiley face emoji with the tears right after it. And none of you guys have gotten pissed off at all. What? I'm telling you that emoji. I I guess I haven't looked at anything that you've written. It's come through, man. And I do it with well, you more did people. it that I know. I you, just did you it, did it with did. hammer time. Yeah, I do it all. That's the, that's the one you posted on Facebook, Matt. I do it all the time. Yeah, but that's not that's not the tier. That's the, the you did one w- with extra money. That's the you laughing. Did the, so you did the money bag. I thing. know. I do it all the time. So what? Wh- why are you doing this? What is the just to see if it allows me to be more direct, but not upset people? I use uh, emojis all the time for that one reason. It's all uh, you have to use this emoji. I'm what, telling you, the laughing one. Yeah, I use it all the time. The, I. I got the one that says if they we both la- we both laughed at Matt's yeah. <laughs> meme yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the that not was, fit for that was really funny. I'm not okay. Can't share that. All right, let's get on to what uh, I really want to talk but about. But I'm saying the one the the face that I got is it, if they got a prescription, then it is a recordable, and then it's the <gasps> it's the exasperated look. So I got that one. Well, hey, that's enough. That's uh, enough. I'm just telling you, the date is in, and it's, it's not it I'm using I've, it more. I've only seen it once. I've done it. A whole bunch. Okay, so what's the what's the data you got on us here? No, it's, I'm just telling you. I, I do that with other people. His, now too. his data was he doesn't have anything because he didn't do you it. You keep going. You'll find but it. I see this one more than anything. The eye roll emoji. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm talking about words when and, I, at the end of words that I use. So for beef, uh, the uh, the reason I got the eyes up or the uh, rolling eyes emoji on this one was because Chet had sent a picture of Chinese crawfish. And we talked about this a while back where Chet gave me a hard time about my, the crawfish that I was buying at the store were Chinese. And now he's taking a, a, a picture of it like a Chinese crawfish. Any good? Uh, they were just a tad bit overcooked, but he's like all impressed that he's eating Chinese crawfish. But now it's he's in China, so it's OK. But it's still the same <laughs> crawfish that have all the, the metals and everything in them anyway. <laughs> And so I just responded, all that talk about Chinese crawfish and shrimp, and here you are eating it instead of trying to find the real stuff imported from America. What's and the top three he today? He rolls his eyes. What's the top three today? Time, time wasters. wasters. Listening to Matt Amos is my top three my time wasters. No, I thought it was top three reasons Chet is now a communist. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them. We, <laughs> That's future episode. One of the towns I was in was uh, extremely smoggy. Uh, Wuhan? No, oh. it was extremely smoggy and uh, like lots of in- industry. Like you could see the smokestacks and you couldn't see very far. But uh, 
we were having dinner one night and, uh, you know, they're bringing out all these crazy kinds of food, all, all this stuff. And it was really good. And then they brought this, this plate of these tiny crabs, like these small crabs about that big. And, uh, I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, we'll eat a little crab here. And, uh, the guy's like, yes, these are famous crab for this region. They came from a lake, like two miles down the road. <laughs> and I immediately was like, I don't think I'm going to eat crab tonight because th- those, those crabs probably aren't. Yeah. Oh, they're full of edible. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, here's what's on my mind. Violence. And I, I have a quote from a well-known figure that says, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and violent people have taken it by force. All right. What do you think about that? Give me some context. Yeah, there you go. Violent people have been seizing <laughs> the kingdom of heaven get. by force. Okay. What do you think about that? You want to read a different, different statement? Yeah, I guess I need more. I don't know. I'll read the whole statement. Well, sentence. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Let me tell you what this means. Violent people are the ones who go to heaven. What do you think about that? I don't know. I want to I see what you have to say about it. It's sure what's on your mind. You know who said this, by the way? Jesus of Nazareth. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Violent people take the kingdom of heaven by force. That I was reading, I I talked to you earlier about reading, uh, teaching on John the Baptist. That passage, I was reading the passage, and it's talking about, you know, John sent some of his disciples to talk to Jesus. Jesus answered the questions that John wanted his disciples to ask him. They left. And then Are you the one? They're like, hey, what about this uh what about this John the Baptist guy? And he's like, Oh, good guy. He's he's a good guy. Da 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 da. And from the days of John the Baptist, that's that's where this statement comes in. Until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people take it by force. And then it, he goes on and keeps talking. And I was just like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, what? Huh? What does that mean? Violent? I don't know. Because it's not like, because you think violent people, you're thinking, well, those, that's bad people. And take heaven by force? Like, uh, heaven's not going to fall. Like, I don't. So does he mean like the people that are, going into heaven like they take heaven as in they seize it like they 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 become a part of heaven or they're doing that violently like really and the answer is yes and it doesn't sit well with somebody that's been in church his whole life because we think about peace and love and turning the other cheek and all of the things that have been taught which are correct. I'm not saying that they're not correct. But then if you look through the teachings of Jesus on how he tells us to deal with sin, what are some of the things that he says? Pluck it out. If you're cut it off. If your left hand causes you to sin, what do you do? Cut it off. And if your eye causes you to sin, what do you do? Pluck it out. Because it's better to go into heaven, heaven, eternity, maimed and mangled than it is to the, not and be fully formed. So then if you think about John the Baptist and in this context, right, like it was people that were had, the, the crowd around Jesus at this time were people that had been baptized by John the Baptist and they had they had followed John and then Jesus came along and John was very open like in two different instances, John's got his group of folks that are with him, disciples and some followers, uh, you know, that are there to hear him preach. 
and Jesus walks by, right? They're in the same intersection or whatever. Or John's just sitting there and Jesus is passing by. And G- and John's like, behold the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Boom. Like, hey, that's the guy. That's that's him. And and so over time, that you know, John's been open enough about it and their ministries are crossing paths. There are some people that left John and started following Jesus. Naturally, that's what John wants to happen, right? Right. Um, and so while this while while this is going on in this passage in Matthew 11, then they're like, well, okay, so John's a good guy. And he's like, yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, good. Because after hearing John's message, I repented and I got baptized. And now I'm following you. I was wondering if I needed to do some baptisms with you. Like, you know, he's like, no, no, no. Same, same, same God. Like same, same, same team here. And they're like, oh, that's great. But, if you think about, and it goes into a lot of this in, in, in Matthew, you can get in Luke again, John the Baptist is in all four, all four gospels. If, if you're in even Jesus, any time, anything going on back in this time, if you have a guy that's speaking and there are thousands of people that are show up, we know there's thousands with Jesus just because we have feeding the 5,000 story in, in, in the gospels, thousands of people. Let's just say there's hundreds of people with John. And the dude's not walking around with a PA system. He's in the wilderness. It's not like he's in an amphitheater somewhere that's designed to project sound. Who are the people that actually get the message? Is it the people that are just like, ah, I heard that John guy speaking. Let me mosey on down there. Oh, gosh, look at all the people. I'm just going to stay here in the back. Are they even hearing the message? Or is it the people that are elbowing their way to the front? And is it the people that are working through the crowd as much as she can just to struggle to reach out and touch the hem of Jesus robe to be instantly healed. Is it the people that have a a paralyzed friend that rip apart a roof of a house that Jesus is in? Not, Oh, I'm just going to take this skylight and move it out of the way. They tear apart a roof to lower the friend down. So, so that they have an opportunity to get that friend in front of Jesus to be healed. The people that have been successful in pursuing Christ do so violently. Not violent towards others. No way am I saying that. But they are violent towards their sin. They are violent towards, I've got to get to the front. I've got to hear this message. I've got to be a part of this. I've got to touch his rope. I'm going to rip this roof off to get my friends in front of him. There, there is a, a nature that is in a believer that will do things that most people are not willing to do to have a relationship with Christ. There are things that we give up to have a relationship with Christ that most people aren't willing to do. And that, that whole verse has caused me to kind of just shift my thinking on how as a believer, I'm treating certain things. Do I make peace with certain TV shows in my life, certain accounts on social media that I follow that are bringing in the opportunity where Jesus is saying, man, you should probably pluck your eye out if you're going to go watch that show. Right. I mean, that, that's the, how violently am I making peace with something that I should be violent against? I think it's very powerful. In fact, um, while doing some research on this, I, I saw, um, Actually, it was a recorded sermon, and I got the transcript from it from uh, Piper. And the name of the, the name of the message is from back in 2002, Kill Sin. And he goes on to say, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twelve, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. That's the quote. Back to Piper. Do you, do you want to enter the kingdom of heaven? Take it violently. But violence against whom or against what? Listen to Jesus' answer here. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands and two feet and be cast into eternal fire. It's Matthew 18, 8. Do you want to enter life? Take it violently. Cut off your hand or your foot if you must keep from stumbling. It is a picture of the most radical kind of assault on our own sin. Not the sins of others, our sins. 
Lay on top of that Romans 8, 13, which is, says this, if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. End of the, end of the passage there in Romans and then back to Piper. Do you want to enter into life? Do you want to live? Get violent. Get a wartime mindset. Stop making peace with ears and eyes and tongues and hands and feet that portray you like Judas and go over to the side of the enemy and become instruments of sin and make your own and make war on your own soul put to death the deeds of your body i never thought about it that way me either that's uh that's what's been on my mind and i've been dwelling on that for i it took me 3 or 4 days of just wow that's a really really good thought i mean i think that's one of those passages of scripture you kind of just like read over and well and, kinda... and, and so i brought that up in uh in the class and and the typical response is oh there were probably some uh persecutors you know and that's that's what i would you know when we're talking about violence it was violence being done to christians is naturally where i went and then it's like no it's christians doing violence against sin and i i think uh you know, we've got a mutual friend, uh, Kevin, who has, you know, you've got experience <laughs> delivering violence. Kevin has a bit more. But um, just in a conversation about uh, responding to a threat, it, it, closing the distance and, and, and inflicting more violence than what's being inflicted on you. Like that, that, that is how we have people that are trained to f- defend ourselves is like, no, you go on the offense and you – lay it down like we're not just going to tuck away and uh you know like like soccer that's one of the things i don't like about soccer there's a turnover and you know what we're going to do we're going to kick the ball all the way back to our goalie and then kind of reset and think you know good and then we're going to kick it out there and like oh we didn't like that let's kick it back to the goalie you know and and from uh this perspective we don't need to do that when sin comes in we don't need to kick everything back to the goalie and and wait and hope everything gets better it is you press, you, you, you press, you move forward violently. I would say rapidly kill it, kill it, get on top of it and kill it. So you've been trained similar to this, I would assume. And how you deal with threats. It's a biblical teaching that you learned in the Marines, the Marine Corps. So funny if you mentioned that. So the mission of the uh, Marine Corps Rival Squad, which everybody uh, 0311 has to memorize, has to know by heart, is the mission of the Marine Corps Rifle, Rifle Squad is to locate, close with, and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver and to repel the enemy's assault by fire and close combat. So you're not just repelling their assault. You're, you're, you know, you're not just defending yourself. I mean, you're doing that in an offensive manner. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it, it's pretty deep, right? So when you're the next opportunity, you're preaching from the pulpit in your backfill role. That, <laughs> I mean, what what a what a great message to get behind. because you look at men these days, like don't be rowdy, you know, be 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 prim, be proper, you know, wear your tight rolled jeans and your lumberjack shirt. Oh, oh, you know, it's speaking speaking truth, Troy. Yeah. I don't yeah. get out much, I guess. But I mean that that's just the this that it's the acceptable role these days. And this is not just for men, by the way, on being violent towards sin. But Jesus is telling you, if you want to be in good standing with me, you will deal with sin. And you will do it in a way that is d- killing and dismembering what's causing you to do that. Like that dismembering we're ripping feet off we're ripping hands off we're killing it and it's the language is throughout the new testament it, the, uh, it's a violent language and it's common it's it's from paul it's from jesus D- kill it be violent towards it that if you want it you got to go kill that kill that sin you got to kill that sin in your life and then if you look at how you treat others it's not that so this is nowhere near Oh yeah, and if you have a non-believer, go be violent towards them. Or oh, if we don't agree on some political issue, 
let's go blow that up. You know, that's not what this is saying at all. It's well, like, yeah, because that would be indirect contradiction to what the Bible teaches about how we exactly. treat others. Treat others, yeah. Right. Love so God, love people. Don't misinterpret right. what I'm saying. The message of violence that Jesus teaches is violence towards your sinful nature, not other people, your sinful nature. So that's what's been on my mind. It sounds like a good word, but it's a little bit more deep than the end of a yeah. podcast, in my good. opinion. And I got the good word this time. That's great. Wonderful. Well, don't steal that. All right. Well, what a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. Matthew, uh... Matthew 11, 12. <laughs> anyway. All right. At Admiral's Pennant, our mission is to offer the latest and refined, high-quality masculine products and services to the modern gentleman, as well as provide him with the tools and products necessary to look, act, and feel confident in his appearance and social interactions. Check it out at admiralspennant.com. Without it, you might as well share. Top three time wasters. We're going to start with me. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I was well. I was actually, I was actually trying to look because uh, through throughout the uh, the whole Bible, there's the theme of the the war, the battles between good and evil, and it's a war, and war is violent, and so if our enemy is sin, then we need to be violent against the enemy. It makes sense. So I, was, I was trying to find a verse elsewhere that correlated with what you were saying. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I got lost. Okay. All right. Sure. Number number three, time wasters. Traffic. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a waste of time, I guess. It is a waste of time. It doesn't have to be wasted time. True. That's why. You could I, be listening to this podcast and uh, what you just heard, and that's not time you, wasted. That's true, and you could also uh, be reading the billboard, electronic billboards that tell you to buckle up. Don't die. Your family needs you. Buckle up. God, this suck. Yeah. Uh, number two, watching the news. Oh, wow. I would agree. That's a huge waste of time. Huge waste of time. So you you went from this top three at the angle of like, oh, I, it's Labor Day and I have a whole day to waste time. I'm going to go do these fun things that are not valuable. You did not go that route. You went the route of these things are really dumb and waste your time. You shouldn't do them. Exactly. Okay, that's the that's the angle I took. Oh, so, you okay, man? Snap. That is not the angle I took. <laughs> yeah. Well, Good. you took the wrong angle. Wrong angle. I'm the, the one, one who wrote the top three, so I'm the only only one who took. When the you're right in traffic, angle. you know what? You know what's a waste of time? I'm trying to get Matt to understand things. That's a time <laughs> that's, waste. That's true. That's true. It might be. All right, Troy. Number one. Scrolling social media. I don't think I need to say anything else. No. But you will. No, shut up. Okay. That's it. I don't need to. I get it. Right. Waste of freaking time. All right. Whoa. Go ahead, man. Complete waste. Unless you're <laughs> watching shorts from the Hard Headed Podcast or Live Local. Yeah, that's right. Um, hold on. I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Writing things down. <laughs> oh, what a waste. So, yeah, I had organizing and I, I couldn't remember, but um, back in the day when I needed to just waste time and I wanted to get excited about I would organize my tackle box. Oh, yeah. As a yeah. time waster. I'd, I'd, get, I'd tear everything out of there, like all the old hooks and all the torn up. That's a, that's a good worms. positive. Yeah. And there, I, there's some positive time wasters. Uh, cleaning the garage. That's a good time waster. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I interrupted you kind of the that. same thing. Right. But then I get excited about, Oh, going fishing, but I can't go fishing right now. And I just have some time to kill. So this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, duck. I do that. Ta I do that fishing. I do that with ducks, duck hunting, like the night before duck season, I'm going to pull out my, my blind bag, which right now is exactly how I left it, which was good enough for me to hunt. But I'm still going to pull it out, empty everything out, go through it all, and put it back in there. Yep. Because you're excited the day before deer season, you need something to kill that time in between, or duck season, kill that time in between the night before and the, yeah. morning, and the morning of. you got to yeah. have something to... Uh, number two, video games. Huge waste of time. True story. Not that they're not fun, but they're a waste of time. And uh, recently, I've gotten off the Call of Duty uh, kick. I've been kind of uh, sick of the uh, the DMZ, which 
whatever. It's just gotten, yeah. it's gotten ridiculous. I don't know what that is. is that the, the, that's the uh, the message, the chatting board, or whatever. What no, is, no, no. It's the demilitarized the, zone. It's teams against other teams. Like, and, uh, oh, it's one of the games your kids play. Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about Fortnite, so I don't know what to tell you. You got to get into it. But huge time waster. And uh, uh, recently I've just been wasting it because I was like, and I told my buddy, I was like, you know, I just, I kind of just want to sit, it's getting so complicated. I just kind of want to sit back and just not think, just do something. And uh, like, you know, Paperboy back in the day, you really have to think, you just kind of went through the motions. Yeah, yeah. You know, just something to. Defender. Just something to waste some time. And uh, so I got car mechanic simulator. And so now I just uh, take cars apart, repair them. That's funny. Send them out the door. <laughs> That's funny. I uh, I saw a meme the other day, or a reel. I can't remember. While I was wasting time, social media, media, media ing, um, is like my boyfriend. Uh, we went on a tour to to now, is this something Alcatraz. You posted? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I just saw it and liked it. We went on a tour to. You're uh, the one that transitioned, man. To Alcatraz, and my my boyfriend said we didn't need a tour guide because he's he knows the map from Call of Duty, or uh, one of the video yeah. games. Yeah. So he's you know he's <laughs> taking her to all the sniper hides or you know all the stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. Matter of fact, there's a hotel. I think it's in Germany that that sued um, because of the uh, the hotel is actually so realistic that all the everything's there. Oh wow. And so I think they eventually paid them off, and so they, they didn't change anything on the map. But pretty crazy. And then uh, number one, I'm with Troy. Anything social media, doesn't matter, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Total waste of time. Yep. All right. I'll go. Took a, a, a little different tack on the first one, and then we're, we're, we're kind of close. Stick-burning smokers. Huge waste of time. I have a pellet grill with a thermostat. Uh, I could set it, and I don't have to. I don't have to baby that thing. Forget it. I don't need to baby it. I could put. I put it. Put it on overnight. I wake up, and I know everything where everything's. But people that have the stick burners, if you're smoking, you're tied to it. You cannot. Can't go away. You got to be there. If the wind changes, your wood's going to burn it or different. Uh, it's it's a huge waste of time to have a stick burner this day and age with the technology we have out there and the fact that pellets are made out of wood. If you want hickory, you got hickory. It's just a, in a pellet form instead of a stick form. I'm just, this is a waste of time. It is a waste of time. I agree. Number two, binge watching TV shows. I'm I'm all for a, hey, you're going to catch a little 30 minute episode here. I like back in the day when you only could watch one episode a week when it came out and you've missed it and you didn't set your VCR, you're screwed. But, the, the what people do now, they get hooked on a show, and then like uh, sixteen hours later, they emerge from this coma. Of oh, I had to, I had to watch the whole season. You know, guilty. Yeah, well, huge waste of time. Hey, I will, I will completely agree with you there because the, uh, Disney, of course, ruined Star Wars years ago, but they just keep, they just, they're all about making shows now instead of like really good movies. Yeah, and not just Star Wars, like across the oh, board, everywhere. Yeah. Like there's so many series that could just been a great, you know, two yeah. hour, two yeah. and a half hour movie. And God, anyway. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you, man. Number one, I'm taking your social media and upping you to your phone because I'm Dude. nine chances out of ten. Bam! You, your social media is on your phone. Nailed like, it. I'm gonna get off Facebook. Well, I'm gonna play. Uh, what is that game that you always played? Angry Birds. There's a game that you played like where you fix windows and stuff. I don't know. I play uh, two dots. Oh, like, it's such a waste of time. I know. Like I, I don't need. I, mean, the, I don't need this phone. That could be. That could be the same as video games. But yeah, your phone. I mean, I. I but the difference between video games and phone is you're gonna have to go somewhere specifically to play your video games. You're gonna go sit in your living room or wherever that is and get in your chair and get the controller out and. So there's like an effort that it takes for you to initiate the time wasting. Phones, dude, you could get lost in the weather app on your phone. There. It's yeah, and waste an hour and a half. It's the dumbest thing, the biggest time waster on the face of the earth. Do you think we're ever going to get right rid there? of them? Oh, I have that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I. Are I, we ever uh, getting rid of phones? 
I don't know. Are they ever going away? Is that, is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what level are you on? Uh, oh my god! What game are y'all talking about? Three three thousand three hundred twenty-six. Oh, I'm at one thousand fifty. Is this Wordle wow. something? This is uh, Matt, Word, Wordscapes. Wordsca- Matt wastes way more time than you do. Wordscapes. Now maybe he just doesn't distribute his time wasting amongst as many games as I do. Oh. I have basically one game. I play it when I poop. I play it when I <laughs> before I go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm really good with words, and so I'm I'm very fast at, yeah, knocking those out. Let me ask you this: You ever clean your phone? Yeah, yeah, alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just checking. Frequently, that's good. Yeah, especially after you play your game when you poop. I yeah. put it down when I wipe, dummy. <laughs> but then you pick it right back up. No, I don't want to wash my hands and then I pick it back up. Uh Okay. Can you not wipe without getting stuff all over your hand? Well, yeah. I was taught as a kid, you know, not to pee on my hand and not to wipe, yeah. wipe poop on my, you know. Well, yeah, but it's still gross. There's a huh? there's occasionally there's as much as that fecal matter floating around in that air you're breathing every time you walk by your bathroom. Yeah, matter of fact, did you see the MythBusters do that on your toothbrush? Ugh. Yep. Ugh. You better have a toothbrush cover, boy. Right. <laughs> I do, and it's in my drawer. Dude, at work we have a. Uh, there's like a little. You walk in, and there's like sinks and all this stuff, and have a little shelf for you to put it. Like if you're walking by and you need to go to the bathroom, you set a notebook down. Or uh, uh-uh. uh, you think I'm bringing something in the bathroom? Like no, this a public bathroom. You got to be kidding me. Some people there's bring their like their uh, particles, their coffee mugs and stuff, and set it down there and go to the bathroom. You know them like, little, What are you doing? You know them little turds are just falling right in. Yeah. <laughs> They're airborne <laughs> micro oh, micro turds. Gosh. Anyway, the, it's the phone. The phone is the is the biggest time waster on the face of the earth, mm. in my opinion. All right, Troy, you got a good word for us? Repent. <laughs> yeah, let's see. John the Baptist. That was last week. Yeah. Um. No, I really, I really don't. I think uh, I'm still. Still thinking about what you talked about earlier and, and the violence. Um, so why don't you wrap that up for us? I d- just rewind, man. I don't, I don't know what else I have to say about that. I if you, if you look at, I don't look at the people too. Let's 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 look at the look at the disciples and let's look at John the Baptist. That dude lived off of locusts and honey, wearing camel's hair leather belt you got fishermen you do have a tax collector but that dude is probably pretty brutal matthew because tax collectors were basically hated and would probably try to be murdered anytime that somebody get old of them so i don't think they're these little fairies walking around um following jesus and and well and then they were to the end i mean all of them were martyred with the exception of john but yeah. he was exiled to an island by himself so they were, they stuck with it, you know. To, to so, the, yeah, v- violence was thrust upon them. Violence, yeah, violence was put upon them, and and Peter was even crucified upside down because it was said that he didn't want to be crucified like Jesus, so they turned him upside down. Um, yeah, they were passionate about what they believed in. Matt looks like he's thinking. What do you got, Matt? I was trying to come up with a with mm. a new, with a new thing, like violent believers, or you know, almost like a twist on VBS. I don't know. We'll come up with a with a a, a decent T shirt, much like our "Don't Sauce My Meat" T shirt. Yeah, if you click on T shirts on our website, hardheadedpodcast dot com. Go to hardheadedpodcast dot com, click and on then click t-shirts. on T shirts, and you will see. The Don't Sauce My Meat t-shirt, t-shirt there. And I've got to order mine. They just, they're not even hot off the press yet. This is new information. It's awesome, by the way. I love it. It's Sweet. Great, great design. Troy did a fantastic graphic design on that using his college degree. Mm. So, be violent towards your sin and passionate about Jesus. And buy our shirt. And buy our shirt. Amen. <laughs> so some prosperity gospel rolled up. <laughs> In that order. We'll see you next week.
Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.